what I'm talking about. Wait. Okay, now, from the beginning. Good morning, everybody. All right. My name is Brian Mosley. I serve as the lead pastor here at the Spring Church. I am delighted to see each one of you here. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm excited to share God's word with you. Are you excited to receive it? All right. Are you excited to learn something new? Maybe be challenged? Maybe take your relationship with God to the next level this morning? Okay. All right. Me too. Well, I want to welcome everyone here. If, uh, if it's your first time here if we're, or if, it's your, uh, if you're a regular here or if you're tuning in on YouTube, I want to say a special welcome to you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I'm excited that, uh, and I believe that God has a wonderful word for us uh, this morning. So today we're going to continue a, a teaching series that Ashley alluded to and that the uh, video is about called The Names of God. All right, would you say that with me? The Names of God. Of God. I'm going to say it one more time like you mean it. The names of God. So, so far we've talked about uh, di different names of God. Last week we talked about, uh, Ashley's shared a message with us on Jehovah Jireh. We shared a message um, a couple weeks ago about our strong creator God, El Ohim. And so today I want to talk to you specifically about Jehovah um, Shalom. Everybody say that with me. Jehovah Shalom. We're going to talk about what that name means, and we're going to talk about the subject of peace here this morning. But I want to I wanted to start with a, with a question to ask you, okay, as we consider uh, peace this morning, what comes to your mind when you hear the word peace? Okay, what comes to your mind when you hear the word peace? And I kind of want to take a little fun survey this morning, if that's okay. And I have several pictures I want to show you up on the screen. And let's see if the word peace comes to your mind when you see this. Okay, let's look at the first picture up there. All right, sleeping in bed. That's me after uh, church uh, because I'm generally exhausted after preaching because I'm an introvert and it just takes a lot out of me to stand up here and give you all my words for the day. Um, but this is this is me at about two o'clock and and can you can you say peace? Oh my goodness, this is this is a wonderful part of the day. But you know what? It only lasts about forty five minutes to an hour. It's very temporary peace. Amen. Okay, next picture. Um, this is uh, supposed to be a soldier waving a white flag of surrender. Like, I just want peace. I give up. Uh, let's look at the next one. Um, oh, yeah, that's, that looks beautiful. I could see myself out there doing a little fly fishing. Any fly fishermen out here? Anybody who's ever caught some trout? Where are you? Raise your hand. Well, okay. All right. My brothers and sisters. That's right. Uh, this is peace in my mind. I love the outdoors. I love getting to national parks. I love fishing. This is peace. But it, you know what? It doesn't last long enough, does it? Okay. Let's look at the next one. Um, yeah, there's there's vacation spot right there. Anybody like the beach? Okay. All right. We got some beach lovers in the house. That's good. Now, this is a wonderful thing. How many of you know that vacations are always too short? Okay. They're wonderful. They're great, but they're always too short, especially if you have little kids with you, because when you get home, you actually need a vacation from your vacation. Um, but this is, a, this is a peaceful time to sit up on the beach. Uh, let's look at this next picture. 
There's a little flower power, all right? A little flower power, peace. I actually uh, put the word in Google, peace, and this is what came up right there. This was the first thing. Uh, so a uh, little hippie flower power action. Anybody, anybody can relate to that, peace? Okay, all right. I see a few, I see a few of these out there. There you go. Okay, um, let's go to the next one. All right, so how about some cash? How about some cash? Can, can money uh, just buy you a little bit of peace, right? But it kind of always runs out, right? Uh, and there's always month at the end of the money usually, and it just doesn't last as long as we want it to, right? So can, can, can money buy um, lasting peace? No, of course not. Uh, let's look at one more. Actually, two more. Okay, friends. How about hanging out with friends? This is a good time. Take, taking selfies with friends is a wonderful thing. Life groups are amazing places to do that. But you know, life groups end, unfortunately. They come to an end and everybody has to go home. And friend time is awesome, but it's just so short and temporary. All right, one more. Here we go. A peace of cake. All right, a piece of cake. Okay, now I, put, I threw that in there. Of course, that's spelled differently than all the other pieces that I'm talking about this morning, but I threw that in there just for you guys, just to uh, get you warmed up for some lunch today, okay? Anybody have a sweet tooth? Okay, me too. Anybody like chocolate cake? Okay, all right. So all these pictures relate in some way to the word peace. Everybody say that word with me again, peace. All right. Today we're going to consider what the Bible says about peace, what peace actually is, where peace comes from, according to the scriptures. And I want you to just think about this and dial in with me this morning about this topic of peace, because I want to teach you some things from the word of God about the God of peace and the peace of God. Okay, I want us to think about that this morning. So we're going to focus on the name Jehovah Shalom. It's going to be up on your screen. If you're taking notes with me, just jot this down. This is Jehovah Shalom. It literally means the Lord is peace. I was looking up that uh, name this, this week and just, you know, Jehovah is the Hebrew name for, for God, which means I am or I am the one who is. Now think about this, Jehovah Shalom. I am the one who is peace. He is the one who is peace. Not only is he the one who is peace, but he is the one who gives true peace and lasting peace. The word Shalom, you look it up in the Bible dictionary and you find uh, different words that, that it means. It means peace, Write these down. Rest. Anybody need some greater rest in your life? Tranquility. Wholeness. Completeness. Contentment. You see, the word shalom, it's often used even, even now among Jewish uh, communities. They will greet one another with shalom. And it means much more than just a greeting. There is depth to that. It means that I, I pray that your life would be filled with tranquility and richness and completeness. It's a very rich term. So when you think of shalom, it's not just a hello or goodbye that Jewish community might, might share between one, and one another. No, it's about peace. It's about wholeness and completeness and contentment. And all throughout the scripture, as we look throughout the Bible from the Old Testament to the New Testament, we see that God is revealed as the one who is peace. And he is revealed as the one who blesses his children with peace. I want to show you just a few verses. These are up on the screen. You can jot these references down if you're taking notes. But the first one is Judges chapter 6. <clears throat> so Israel was going through a very difficult time. The Lord was uh, using the Midianites to uh, judge Israel during their backsliding days. And the, 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 this guy Gideon had a encounter face-to-face -face with God. 
And they thought, and they thought back then that, you know, if you see the face of God, you shall surely die. So Gideon was upset. He was confused. He didn't know what to do. But the Lord told him, don't be afraid. Peace to you. Shalom to you. And you know what Gideon did? He made an altar. It says, so Gideon built an altar to the Lord, and there he named that altar. You know what he named it? Jehovah Shalom. He named it, the Lord is peace. Also in Psalm 29, verse 11, it says this, the Lord, look at this, gives strength to his people. It is the Lord who blesses his people with what? Peace. The Lord blesses his people with peace, with shalom. In Psalm 119, one, verse 165, it says this, Great peace, great peace have those who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. I just want you to get hungry for a moment for this, this peace that comes from God. Because you may be in a situation this morning where peace is nowhere to be found. Peace is absent. And I want to encourage you today. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Okay? Look at uh, Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. It says this. You will keep in perfect what? Peace, whose mind, whose minds are steadfast, or whose minds are fixed on you, or whose minds are stayed upon you, because they trust in you. How many of you want that perfect peace in your life? I know I do. Lord, bless us with that perfect peace. Help me to keep my mind steadfast upon you. In Isaiah chapter, chapter 9, verse 6, I want you to think about this with me. This is a, a prophecy about our Lord Jesus Christ. But he says, it says this, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called, I love this, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and, and look at this, the Prince of peace. He is the giver of peace. He is the prince of peace. In John chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus himself said this, said these words, peace I leave with you to his disciples and also to us here today. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you, right? I do not give as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. How many of you know that Jesus is the giver of peace? Jesus is the giver of peace, and he gives to us uh, by his power, through his Holy Spirit, according to his word. He does not give according to the world. The world gives peace by, tries to give temporary peace by outward circumstances, or by money, or by experiences, or by the things that we, that, but we cannot be deceived that true peace, true lasting peace, comes only from the hand of God through Jesus Christ. So, just for a few minutes today, I just want us to consider this this morning. Here's a question. What do I do when I need some peace in my life? What do you do? When you're going through difficult times, and Lord knows we all go through difficult times, but what do you do when those times come and you need some peace in your life? And here's what I know about all of us. I know some of us uh, personally here, but many of you I don't know personally, but I believe this is true about every single person here. We will all have times in our lives where we feel like everything is going wrong. We will all have difficult times. We will all have troubled seasons. Your marriage may be struggling. Your kids may be losing their minds. There's always more month at the end of your money. 
You may have lost a loved one. You may be, you, maybe you've experienced a divorce or relationship problems and tension. Maybe you're coping with a, a job loss or a new job or a job that you hate. Maybe it's dealing with a sickness or dealing with some kind of disease in your life or with a family member. Maybe it's an addiction in your life. Maybe you're addicted to people pleasing or alcohol or drugs or pornography or whatever the addiction is. You just can't shake it. And the anxiety and the depression and, and the, the uh, despair just can't seem, just won't seem to let go and let you leave. But whatever the case is, we all face difficulties in this life. For one reason or the other, there are all, we all have times of trouble. But when trouble hits, what do I do? When trouble comes, and it will, and what do I do when I need that peace? That's our question I want us to think about. Because honestly, most, most people, if I've been, being, I've been a pastor for a little while now, and I've had counseling sessions with people, and, and most people, when they answer that question, what do you do when you need peace? Most people are trying to find peace in all kinds of different ways. Number one, they're trying to work harder. They work longer. And trying to figure out with their own mind to how to change their life, how to change their circumstances. And there are some things that God calls us to do specifically. But they, they sometimes will retreat. They sometimes will run away to numb the pain or just withdraw. They want to just ignore it or, or, or numb it with alcohol, with drugs, whatever. And then some people, they'll just blame it on other people. They'll just be like, no, this isn't my fault. This is his fault. This is her fault. This is my circumstances fault. And they don't take responsibility for what's going. But, but listen, friends, we don't need any of that stuff. We don't need to go down that path. There is a better way. And it is God's way. And it is the way of the scripture. Okay? That's what I want to talk to you about uh, this morning. So tar- turn with me, if you have your Bibles, to uh, Philippians chapter 4. Or open it up on your, uh, de- on your devices. And let's look at Philippians chapter 4. Because the Apostle Paul is going to give us some huge instructions. On how to know this God of peace. And how to experience the pe- this peace of God that is not temporary. It's not fleeting. And it's not weak. Now... Philippians chapter 4 is written by the Apostle Paul, writing to other Christians in this dark, smelly, dingy, very uncomfortable circumstance that the Apostle finds himself in. He finds himself in a prison cell. And he says this, which blows my mind. Rejoice in the Lord always. He's in the worst of the worst situations, and he says this to to his Christian brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always, all the time, the good times and the bad times, rejoice in the Lord. And And he even emphasizes it even more. He says, I will say it again, rejoice. Now, how could the Apostle Paul say such a thing? It's because his peace, Paul's peace, was based upon the confidence that God was in control no matter what was happening on the outside circumstances. God was in control. Even in the worst of situations, Paul knew that God had him in the palm of his hand. Paul knew that God was good and that God was working all things together for his good. And Paul knew that he had so much to rejoice about. In this life, because he had been saved, he had been transformed, he had been given new life in Christ. Of course, he could say rejoice, but he didn't say just rejoice and be happy. He said, make sure you re- your rejoicing is in the Lord. Make sure your rejoicing is in the right place. He's not calling Christians here to put on a facade, Right? And to paste on a false smile and act like things are perfect when they're actually not. Instead, he's calling them to find their joy, find their peace 
in the midst of even the most difficult circumstances, he finds that peace only in the one who can bring true joy and peace into our lives, the Lord, Jehovah Shalom, Jesus Christ. And he says, he says this in verse 5, let your gentleness be evident to all. Paul used a very interesting word here in the Greek for gentleness. Uh, it's, it's translated gentleness in the NIV, but other translations of the Bible state it as patience or softness or a patient mind or modesty or forbearance or a forbearing spirit. And this word describes the heart of a person who will let the Lord fight their battles for them. They have such trust, such, such trust in the Lord. It describes a person who is really free to let go of his anxieties and, to, and, and all the things that cause him stress because he knows that the Lord will fight for him. The Lord will take up his cause. Let your gentleness be evident to all. He goes on to say these words, the Lord is near. Boy, I love this. Isn't this power? Think about this. The Lord is near. When we live with the awareness that the Lord himself is close by, it changes everything. And you think about, I believe very strongly that the second coming of Jesus Christ is going to happen very, very soon. And when we believe that and we're in, when we are aware that Jesus Christ's return is going to be very soon, it makes it all the more easy to rejoice. It makes it all the more easy to trust the Lord in that he's going to settle every wrong, that he's going to right everything that may have been done to you unjustly. He's going to make it all right when he returns and he establishes his kingdom. That's why Paul can say, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I tell you, don't forget to rejoice so in verse 6, he goes on to say, don't miss this. He says, do not be anxious about anything. Wow. This is not an option. This is Paul giving a command to the Christians. He's saying, don't do this. Don't be anxious about anything. In other words, worry about nothing. Worry about nothing. I read a quote one time that really stuck in my mind. It says, worry is like a rocking chair. There's a, it gives you something to do, but it gets you nowhere. <clears throat> what good is worry? How can it add to your life? Jesus talked a lot about worry, but when we worry, we're actually acknowledging the truth that we are inadequate in our own power, in our own strength to meet the demands of our life. And this is our moment when we feel that inadequacy. That is the moment to take your worry and turn it into something else. That is your moment to remind yourself about who God really is. It's in that moment where you feel so inadequate, so worried about this or that or what's going to happen down the line where you need to remind yourself that God, Jehovah Shalom, is everywhere. He is everywhere. No, there is no place, no matter how alone we may feel in this world, that God cannot be. He is everywhere at all times. Not only that, but he knows everything, right? This is the God that we love and serve. He knows everything. He knows how afraid we are. He knows how bad that we feel. He knows what scares us. The more worried we become, the more the more we act as if God were ignorant of our situation. God knows everything. He knows everything. He knows our needs. He knows our desires. Not only that, but he is all powerful. My goodness, God is so amazing. He's everywhere at all times. He is, he knows everything. He knows, he is om, omniscient, right? What's that theological word? He is omnipresent. He is omniscient and he is omnipotent. He is all powerful. Worries feel that no one, worriers feel that no one has the power to stop bad things 
from happening. Not even God. But God has limitless power. Amen? God has limitless power, and he, he has his own wise reasons for allowing things to happen in this world and in your world. Now, worry and anxiety can either bring us to Jehovah Shalom, or it can cause us to, to drive, a, drive a wedge, drive away from God. The challenge is how we deal with it. How are we going to deal with it when those times come, when we feel that anxiety, when we feel that worry? What are you going to do if you need some peace in your life? Let's look at the next verse. The next part, it says this. This is the key. It says, but in every situation, in every single situation, good, bad, small, little, big, whatever, in, bet in between size, in every single situation, by prayer and petition. Prayer is a, that general term that means communion with God, speaking with Him and letting Him speak with you. All kinds of prayers, like praising and worshiping and giving thanks and all of those things. But then he says petitions. Petitions are more specific requests of God. Specific. Let me encourage you guys. When you pray, pray specifically. Pray specifically what you're asking for. Tell God exactly what you need and how you need it. God already knows our request before we ask him, yet he will often wait for our participation in prayer before he grants that which we request. And this is the, tr and, and this is the truth. Wouldn't we want to make this verse a reality in our lives, that in everything we're praying people, in everything we are petitioning God with specific requests, and so that we would not live anxious lives, that we would not live worried lives, but no, we would live confident in God, knowing that He's got us, and that He's good, and that He's working all things together for our good, just like the Apostle Paul I think we've all been there, haven't we? We can see each, each and every day that we've, we face opportunities to be worried. We face opportunities to be troubled about all kinds of different things because we have challenges. We have conflicts. We have difficulties. We have things that we have to deal with, and many of them are very hard. I don't want to discount it. Many of them are very hard things to, to have to deal with, especially in a godly manner. And in each of these situations, we have a choice. Everybody say, I have a choice. We have a choice whether we can, we will allow ourselves to become preoccupied and distracted and troubled about all of our problems and all of the circumstances that we have going on, or we can spend time submitting these problems to God and asking for his wisdom and asking for his peace. Asking for his guidance so that we're able to deal with these things and resolve them in a godly way. Amen. We all have a choice. And which choice would Satan want to encourage you to take? Right. I believe Satan wants us to be distracted with the worries of this life. Satan wants us troubled and upset all the time. The last thing that he wants for us is to calmly handle a problematic situation and turn it over to God and ask God for his wisdom and direction and resolution. So the next time that we feel anxious, the next time that we feel worried or troubled in our lives, let that be a reminder to us to turn your face to God. Let that be a reminder to you to Enter into your prayer time. How many of you know it's important to have a daily 
prayer time. How many, it's important to have times alone with God. Sometimes if you're a parent, you know this, you have to lock yourself in the bathroom just to have five minutes alone. But get up early, stay up late, whatever you need to do to have some time with God, some quality time with God. And Satan will do everything that he can to prevent that time from happening in your life. You need to get, get, get stubborn about it, get steadfast about it, and say, every single day, I'm going to get alone with Jehovah Shalom. Every single day, I'm going to be with Him. Every single day, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. Every single day. And there's nothing that Satan can do to hinder that or stop that. I'm committed to it, and I'm going to be stubborn about it. Amen? <clears throat> Let's look at verse 7. Here's the results. Here's the promise that comes. Verse 7, and the peace of God. Everybody say the peace of God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. As a result of us spending that time in prayer and petitioning God and laying our request out to Him, here's the promise. Peace comes to us as an unexplainable gift. Wow, what a gift. This is where true peace comes from, friends. It comes from the presence of God. It comes because of His grace. It comes as a response of our prayers and our submitting ourselves to Him and saying, God, if you don't help me, I'm sunk. God, you're my only hope. God, I'm depending upon you alone. And as we do that, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. That word guard speaks of a military action. A military action. This is something that the peace of God does for us. It is a peace that is on guard over our hearts. It is the peace of God that is on guard over our minds. So we find here this beautiful alternative that God lays out before us so that we, we don't have to endure and choose a life of worry and a life of stress. No, we can turn ourselves to Jehovah Shalom and we can find peace. And it's not a fleeting, passing peace like a day fishing or like eating a chocolate cake, or like a sunny day at the beach, or an afternoon Sunday nap. No, this peace is lasting, and it surpasses all understanding like it doesn't make sense. When people ask you, why are you so peaceful? You say, it's the peace of of God. I don't even really fully understand it, and I don't expect anybody else to, but it's God's peace that guards our hearts and our minds. And this is the peace that can endure. It lasts forever and ever, even in the midst of the hardest things that we face in life. Even in the midst of stress and the most difficult things, we can have God's peace. Only God knows what our future holds. Amen? Only God knows what will happen in our personal lives in the coming days, weeks, and months ahead. Only God knows the timeline of how he's laid out the, com the second coming of Jesus Christ. The, the wars and rumors of wars and famines and the difficult times ahead that are coming upon this world. Only God knows those things. I want, to, I want to share this uh, quote with you. I can't remember if I put it up on the screen, but it says this. Anxiety happens when I try to figure everything out. <clears throat> Anybody ever tried to do that? How'd that work out for you? Okay. Anxiety happens when I try to figure everything out. Peace happens when I remember God loves me. And that he already has everything figured out. All right? There's a difference there. Anxiety and peace. No, peace, trust in the Lord. Because what we can know is that we can have the enduring peace 
of God, as we delight ourselves in Him, as we seek His holy face, and moment by moment we turn our problems and our issues over to His loving care. That's where the peace of God comes from. Let's continue in verse 8. It says this, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, look at these words, think about such things. What's the, what's the Apostle Paul telling us in this verse? Is that much of the peaceful Christian life centers around this. We have to learn to think the right things. We have to learn to think correctly. I always encourage people this. Think about what you think about. What's going on in your, in your thoughts? If you want lasting peace... If you want peace that continues on, Paul says this, pay attention to your thoughts and make sure they are what? True, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. That is your new thinking filter. Don't let any thoughts come in that are allowed to roam around without passing through that filter first. If you want the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, Paul says this, pay attention to the way you're thinking. Make sure it's accurate. Verse 9 says this, Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, Paul says, or seen in me, put these things into practice. Paul had the integrity to present himself as an example of all these things to the Philippians. And he could, he could really say, follow me as I follow Christ. The bottom line is this. We have to apply God's word to our everyday lives. If there's no application... If we just come and we hear a good word on Sunday, but it doesn't change the way we live on Monday, there's a disconnect. So that's why our prayer is always that what we hear, we don't leave it, we don't leave it here. What we gain on Sundays, we don't keep it in these four walls. No, it goes with us on the job. It goes with us to our work. It goes with us as we raise our kids. It goes with us. These things, these truths of the scripture need to be applied to our lives. Paul said it this way. You put them in to practice. The power is in the application. Amen. And he says this. Here's the last words. He says, and the God of peace will be with you. The God of peace will be with you. Jehovah Shalom. The God of peace will be with you as you do these things. If the Philippians did, as Paul instructed, not only would they have the peace of God, but, but the God of peace would be with them. How many of you know it's a powerful thing to be aware of the God of peace who is with you? <clears throat> I want to invite the worship team up as we get ready to close. But I want us to just think about how amazing our God is. How wonderful he is. He is Jehovah Shalom. He says, I am the one who is peace. I am that I am. I am the one who is always, I have always been, I am now, I will forever be Jehovah Shalom. Shalom. And Jesus Christ says he is the prince of peace. So as we go about our lives and we face all kinds of difficulties and troubles in this life, you and I, we're going to have some big choices to make. Everybody say, I've got some big choices to make. <clears throat> when we feel worry, 
and we feel anxiety begin to creep in, especially, let me encourage you today, obey the Word of God. Obey the Bible and choose God's path to true and lasting peace. Jesus says He gives us peace, but He doesn't give as the world gives. And so as the Apostle Paul said, and jot, jot these down if you're taking notes, if you haven't taken these notes already. Number one is this. You're going to have to choose to rejoice in the Lord. In every situation, good or bad, you must choose yourself to rejoice in the Lord. Number two is this. You have to choose to worry about what? Nothing. Nothing. What a challenge. You rejoice in the Lord and you worry about nothing. But how many worry warts do we have in the room? All right. We're going to pray for you. I'm one too, by the way. Not only do we worry about nothing, but we choose to pray about everything. Every single thing. Good thing. Bad things, big things, small things, we pray about everything. Every single thing, the Apostle Paul tells us. And then we choose to think about the right things. I'm just giving you a recap here of what we've talked about in Philippians 4. We choose to think about the right things. And finally, we choose to apply God's word to our lives, to our everyday lives, to our everyday choices. How can we apply God's word? What does God's word say about this situation? What does God, God's word say about that situation? Look it up. Know it. You cannot apply something that you do not know. Right? That's why it's important to come to church. That's why it's important to go to life group. That's why it's important to attend the growth track. That's why it's important to have your daily times with God because you need to know the word of God in order to apply it. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> the peace of God is available to each one of us. Would you stand with me, please? If you're here today and you'd say, Brian, I'm just in a place where I'm, I have no peace in my life. I have absolutely no peace in, in, in my life. It's just, it just seems like one trouble after the next. And it's just a big hurricane of storm and problems and anxieties and worries. And I want you to know that God brought you here to hear this message of hope, that peace is available to you. The peace of God is available to, to you, and the God of all peace wants to know you and wants to help you and wants to take you to the next level and he wants to bless you with that shalom kind of peace. You're not here today by accident. You're here because God brought you here to take you to the next level and to help you and to set you free from your anxieties and from your worries. And so just before, before God, in the presence of God, let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. If you're here today and you would say, Brian, I need the peace of God. I just want you to slip up your hand real quick and let me see you. And then you can put it back down. Amen. Thank you for raising your hands. Thank you, guys. You can, you can put your hands down. I want to pray for you right now. Father God, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for the power of your word. Lord, we thank you for the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Lord, we thank you that you are Jehovah Shalom, the God of all peace. You are the Lord who is peace. And Lord, today I pray for my brothers and sisters and my, my family, my friends, any, anyone who is here today uh, or watching us by way of YouTube, I pray that the peace of God right now just overshadows them and strengthens them and guards takes, their, takes that stand to guard their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. And I pray today that even in this moment, they would sense 
your supernatural, powerful peace upon their lives and upon their hearts and their minds right now. God of all peace, would you make your presence known in a very real way right now to my friends, my brothers, and my sisters. Father, strengthen us to obey your word. Strengthen us, God, to choose to rejoice and to, and to choose to not worry and to choose to pray about everything, God. And Lord, especially help us with our thinking. Help us with our thoughts, God. Lord, help us to think your thoughts. Help our thoughts to be in alignment with your holy word. And Lord, help us to apply and to practice the things that we know. Help us, God, every single day to be alone with you, to know, God, that we, in that personal relationship with you, is true peace. It's only there by knowing you, God. Jehovah Shalom. It's only there we know true and lasting peace. We thank you for your love and your mercy, God. Lord, we just worship you today. Lord, if you're a comfortable church, just raise your hands and worship the Lord. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for the peace that surpasses all understanding today. Lord, we thank you that you are the God of all peace. And Lord, we just receive right now. Lord, we receive right now your holy peace, Lord, upon our lives. And Lord, we're not going to live anymore in anxiety. We're not going to live anymore in worry and depression and despair. God, but we're going to live in your freedom. We're going to live in your holy peace. We thank you for that, God. Lord, we receive it now. We receive the peace that only you can give to us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said amen.